What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. This is Body Mess Sports, your spot for uncensored, unfiltered sports opinions. Today is episode eight of Zooming with the Boys. We are covering the NBA playoffs still. It's dragging along. It needs to uh, get done, but we are going to be here till the bitter end. Today, we're going to be talking about the NBA awards that have been given out so far. The all NBA teams that have been announced, it's only been the all NBA defensive teams been announced so far, but we'll go over that. The playoff games that have happened since last week, and we'll give our predictions for tonight and tomorrow's games. So we'll go right into the NBA awards. The big award was just given out over the weekend. Nikola Jokic from the Denver Nuggets is this year's MVP. How does everyone feel about uh, Jokic winning MVP? Well, I mean, he got swept, so. <laughs> That's my feelings about it, too. I personally I, I, be- <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. I, I personally believe the NBA needs to figure out a proper timeline for these fucking uh, awards. Like, they need to either do it right at the end of the regular season or do it right at the end of the playoffs, not midway through the playoffs, because it's going to tarnish the image of the award in, like, especially Jokic's situation where he gets – Absolutely fucking bombarded by the Phoenix Suns. Can't handle him whatsoever. He had one good game, and it was the only game. It was the game right as he was being announced for MVP. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. I think it's the only sport that sends them out. I think the the NFL gives out the All Pro, but I don't think they give out awards till the end, right? Yeah, like NHL has an award show. I think it's cooler the award shows. I used to watch them, like the, in the NHL. You go down to Vegas, and they were pretty pretty fucking crazy. But, like, I mean, announcing the MVP halfway through the second round of the playoffs is kind of like, the fuck? Like, I, I don't know. It, it is a weird timing for it. Yeah, definitely. Owen, what do you think about Jokic, bud? Um, I, I had that predicted. I think we all did, basically. Uh, you know, you did. did you say Steph Curry? I said Joel and <laughs> I said I said Curry and Nick Jokic. I said like, stuff. Like one, of, like I think they're neck and neck for me, but Jokic deserved it. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, he definitely did. Smaller seat. I thought. Uh, I thought Embiid was going to take it before Jokic would. I thought it was between Embiid and Curry. To be honest with you, if Embiid didn't um, get hurt, I think. Yeah, he would have had it. Jokic definitely he deserves it too. I mean, he he balled out. But yeah. uh, like you said, he got swept in the first round. So, I mean, it doesn't really look good on the MVP. Oh, no, they, they, they took out the big Portland fucking trailblazers in the first round. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Whoa. But, I mean, in all honesty, Murray <laughs> went out with, I think, you know, yeah. almost a third of the season left. And they had the second best record in the NBA after that. So, you know, he did carry them, and I think he did deserve it. But, yeah, you know. Obviously, Definitely he balled can out, only but... go so far. And... Well, what was that stat line he had against the Sun? Wasn't it like? 30 point, like a stupid triple double. He had, uh, 20, he had like 10. 20 rebounds, yeah. He had a 32 20 10 game, yeah. yeah. Like then the next game, L. he got that. I'm sorry, but that shouldn't have been a flagrant, too. I mean, he he kind of got his face, but he did get a lot like most of the ball. I think, but he kind of sold it a bit. Cameron yeah. Payne, oh, we I were... mean, let's be honest, they're elimination game, though. Like, yeah. come on, like, fuck. Anyone, anyone's gonna sell that, kick the fucking best player out of the fucking elimination think... game, though. Brandon and I were talking about this too. Just the playoffs, the refing has been so inconsistent. It's, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's not sickening, but it's just some playoff series look like they're playoff basketball and some look like it's fucking college basketball, the amount of shit they're calling. So mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. And Jokic is like a deserving MVP as well. But again, it's just the timing of the award as well. You can't really give out an award in the second round and then watch a team get swept. It kind of just takes away from the award and really it's the NBA's fault. They should figure their shit out. They used to have award shows back in the day, probably because of COVID they're not doing that right now, but yeah, at, least, at, least, at least stay consistent with the timeline. Like fuck man. Yeah. But, I don't know. I feel like they shouldn't be giving out all that stuff. Like the all pro teams right now, like in the playoffs, they let the guys focus on that instead of like, if there's a player who, uh, thought maybe he would have been an all pro for defense or general all pro and they're still in the playoffs like it gets to their head might play off like i don't know 
I feel like that should be held for after. And these are like regular season awards, like use the three yeah. days and three or four days in between the regular season and the playoffs to announce all this shit. Like, why are you doing mm-hmm. it during the playoffs? It's just kind of fucking stupid. I've never seen any sport announce awards like that in the playoffs. No, nah, it's just all over the place. They need more consistency. Uh, defensive player of the year, Rudy Bullshit. Gobert. I believe that's uh, that's well deserved as well. I mean, he uh, he he can put up fucking ten or fifteen points a game, but he's just a rebound rebound block magnet, and he's been. I find when players put themselves in the conversations for these awards, they're thought of the next year, regardless of how well they play. Like if they keep a consistent production to what they did when they won the award previously, it's uh, they're kind of already in the running. Yeah, I think uh, Simmons got robbed. In my opinion, I think it was. I I don't care. You know, like he was the best defender in the NBA this year for sure, and. Uh, you know, there's not much more to it, man. Gobert, you know, he is a great defender. Obviously, one of the best that, you know, he's going to go down as one of the best defenders in NBA history. But I just think this year was Simmons' year for sure. Simmons is good at defense, but, like, me and Gobert averaged second in the league in rebounds, first in blocks, threw up 13, 14, 15 points a game. I don't know, it's hard not to give that Got 40-piece by Ben Simmons. Lost, <laughs> lost the game against the Suns in the regular season when Boak brought him out to the perimeter, absolutely fried him. You saw that blip. I think it was against the Timberwolves where he was, you know, he's the leader rim protector, and they walked in with three seconds left, a wide open layup because he didn't know where to go. You know, there was a, there was five or six examples of that this year, and I couldn't even count as many on my hand that he had this year. They also had a first place team. I mean, so did Philly. Why did they finish first? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought Brooklyn did. <laughs> no. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. Awesome. I think I think Gobert def- he's definitely deserving of it. I mean, leading the league slouch. in blocks, but uh, he also put up a career high in blocks too at the same time while doing it. So, and uh, he cut his fouls down this year a lot. So that's a big help for the team. <laughs> Probably what Max getting at is like defensive pressure and shit like like the defensive pressure stats and those like deep analytical shit. Ben Simmons definitely takes the uh, the helm on that, but like you got to think these fucking reporters and shit that vote for these awards like Skip ba- Skip Bayless. But I'm pretty sure he votes for like Hall of Fame shit in the NBA and for these fucking awards. So like it's, it's he probably literally, voted Kawhi. It's literally people like that. <laughs> <laughs> that vote for these fucking awards. So they're just, they're not going to look at these deep analytical, like defensive yeah. pressure, defensive efficiency no. based on position type stats. They're going to look at fucking rebounds, blocks, steals for defense and yeah. offense, everything. I, based I also think like those guys too, like I think they might like also take a, a look at the media and what they think, like when they see people tweeting or posting those stuff and it's all like this person, this person, this person, like I think that gives them, a second thought of like, yeah, mm. like, they're like a lot is influenced by the media. I think now. Yeah, it's not like Go Bears a slouch. He is the best rim protector in the NBA, and yeah. you know, obviously he had a phenomenal season. It's just, I just think of this was Simmons' year. I think he was just, I just think he made more of an impact. And you know, come playoff time, you know, Simmons is on the best player. You know, you look look at the like look at Game One in the Hawks series. We stuck Danny Green on Trey Young. And then you go to the next two games, Simmons is on him, and he's, he's – the next three games, and Trey Young's efficiency just goes right down. He put 25 on his head. He shot – yeah, on 26 shot attempts. That's terrible efficiency. Well, I know. But they want to be Brutal. And, that, and the same thing is happening with P.J. Tucker and Kevin Durant right now. And yeah. If we're going to allude to that, like P.J. Tucker is, like, dropping he's Kevin Durant's efficiency – and it allows the Bucks to have a more spread defense with Middleton uh, and the Kupo and Drew Holiday just fucking spreading the defense out, especially with the injuries the Nets are going through. But yeah. we'll get we'll get to that. We'll speed through these ones because these ones don't really fucking matter. The sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. Good for you, bud. You're on one of the best teams in the <laughs> league, and uh, we we didn't really expect you to be much uh, much of an addition to that team. But you can put up 18, 25, fucking seven, ten, whatever you want. Yeah. Anytime, so good on Jordan Clarkson for six man of the year. 
most improved player, Julius Randall. This one was pretty fucking obvious. Like, well deserved. He had a the only reason Knicks are in the playoffs. The only reason Knicks are in the playoffs. He literally was trash when he played for like teams like the Lakers. I'm pretty sure he played for the Pelicans as well and was fucking yep. garbage. And then he gets shipped to New York and he's the man of the fucking Mecca. And then obviously coach of the year, Tom Thibodeau got the Knicks back into the uh back into the playoffs after and they don't on paper they don't really have much of a better team than they have in the years no. past. They're just really developing from within and yeah. picking away. Yeah the uh Thibodeau really helped that defense a lot I think. Mm-hmm. What do you guys got to say about those three awards? I don't. I mean, really I don't think any of them were really up for debate. No, they weren't. Yeah, no. Clarkson definitely should have won it. Yeah, uh, Clarkson was sweet this year. He, he Julius up. Randall. Uh, when, yeah, Julius Randall definitely should have. Sorry, twenty four ten, fucking shooting over forty percent from three for a big man like that's just. Yeah, just insane. Like the only one up for debate was probably the coach. You know, maybe could have went to Quinn Snyder in Utah. Yeah. You know, honestly, but just the, how, like how about in Atlanta? Big, yeah. How about the next man to come and get the yeah. number four spot? I yeah. definitely, Debo definitely yeah. or Thibodeau, sorry, definitely deserved it. Yep. Oh, and no real arguments. Any uh, any parting thoughts on those three awards, bud? No, I think they're all. Pretty straightforward. Clarkson was uh, – who was the runner-up for that? For six, man? Yeah. It was Clarkson, Joe Ingles, and Derek Rose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, Clarkson definitely deserved it. I think he had like a 40. Ingles is Clarkson sick as fuck, though, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Derek oh, Rose got a first-place MVP vote. Yep. That I shows one, you one. how, <laughs> like, <laughs> some some of it is – One. Like, yeah, how – I don't know. Yeah, it just, it just shows how it's just, like, the voters have their own fucking opinions. I think it was the speak. fan vote, but... Yeah, it was. Still. Sure. It was, yeah. Co- I think Coach the Year went well, like, the next got back to the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Mont- Monty Williams could have definitely uh, gotten that, though. But It's just these awards aren't really... There's not much to debate about because no one really gives a fuck about them. Maybe maybe the <laughs> sixth man of the year award, but like most improved player, good for you. You improved from last season and coach of the year usually goes to a first seed team, but uh, yeah. there's exceptions based on how teams fluctuate. And that's mm-hmm. what happened with the next. Or usually if a team is dead last and all of a sudden they come back up. But I mean, the next deserve yeah. that. You got the playoffs. So. And uh, I guess we'll talk about the all NBA defensive team. So, defensive first team Giannis Antetokounmpo, Draymond Green, Rudy Gobert, Ben Simmons, and Drew Alday. And then the all NBA defensive second team was Bam Adebayo, Kawhi Leonard, Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler, and Matisse Thybul. So, the boys. I mean, a lot of Milwaukee Bucks, there were a couple of Milwaukee Bucks, a bunch of fucking Philadelphia 76ers, and a couple Miami Heat in there too. So I don't really know what to say. Jimmy was deserving of the second team. I was thinking of who really wasn't deserving. Kawhi Leonard is a question mark. Like he always plays solid defense, but are the stats there for it? Yeah. Um, Matisse Thibault is more of the more of that pressure defense that we were alluding to with Ben Simmons as well. Their team is just a really good defensive team. So I can understand the Matisse Thibault pick. He's just known for his defense but yeah i don't really have any disagreements when I, with any of this no. i think i think no. the league got it all either. right here yeah I, for sure i think they need to add a third team honestly because you look at some of the guys that did miss out royce o'neill um you got uh lou dort missed out marcus smart like there's miles turner you know he wasn't healthy the whole year but there's so many guys that miss out and and defense, you know, a lot of the time it goes unnoticed, you know, you're watching, you're watching the NBA and, you know, obviously you're going to see highlights of Steph Curry banging home threes, but you're not going to watch a highlight of Marcus Smart switching on to someone, you know, in the last possession of the game and getting a key stop, you know, or getting I a think- key tip. And it's just the eye test for these kind of, for, for defense is so, so much lower and so much harder to, to see than, than offense. And, you know, it's really a lot of the deep analytics that not a lot of people, including myself, fully understand. You know, uh, it's not our jobs to do that. But uh, 
I think the 10 guys that are there, they're definitely 10 of at least the top 15 defenders in the NBA for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they recently just got rid of the third team. Like, I thought they always had a third team. They had an all-NBA third team. And I yeah, was going to say the same them. thing. I was going to say the same thing. I thought there always was a third team. Mm-hmm. Again, this alludes to fucking the league not having their shit together at these awards. Like, <laughs> let's have some fucking consistency. There's tradition in these leagues. Silver sesh. And, like, yeah. you're, you're already steering the league into a bad position with these – fucking foul calls and protecting offensive weapons in order for them. And it's basically all these leagues are just trying to transfer into like an all offense type fucking shit, like the NHL, the NFL, they're just, they're being harsher with the penalties in order to try and combat against like big defensive plays. And it's just sad to see I'm more of an old school guy. I like good fucking defense. And then I saw a reporter on ESPN saying, well, do you want to watch a game that's 86, 83? I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't mind watching a game that's 86, 83. But they're intense, <laughs> man. They're fucking intense. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot better than games that are fucking 140 to fucking 92 nowadays. Yeah. Like, the fucking yeah. Brooklyn that It's like. It's like you shut that game off after the third and you know it's fucking over. That's, that's what people like to watch. Though. I like to see teams get blown out, have three or four guys drop 30 points. Like, Yeah, um, but it's also per- the people that don't yeah. watch the NBA. I was going to say, personally, I don't. I would it's, rather a closer game. It's the John it's a lot more intense. The no, yeah. I, I like watching close games that are yeah. intense. How like, many close Suns games have you watched this uh, playoff? We're in the third round now, you said, right? Yeah, we're in the third round. Yeah. How many blowouts have you watched? Well, they've, they've got a few Lakers. Yeah. All right, bud. I thought maybe a good uh, like if there was a third team. I don't. I think that this guy um, probably would have cracked it. Uh, no one said his name, but Clint Capella. He led the league in rebounds, third in blocks, fifteen points per game. I, don't know, I think that guy uh, definitely would have been the top of the third team if they still had it. Yeah, probably him or Turner. Yeah. I think Turner let him blocks per game still, but he was hurt for a while. And I think the field goal percentage in the paint against him was one of the lower ones. Yeah, Capella had fifty nine percent field goal too. Like, yeah, pretty good season for him. Bounce back for sure. Yeah, he had so what? Like he had something wrong with his foot in the season before. Fucking had him in fantasy, and he was out for fucking like the last half of the season with a foot injury. I mean, yeah, <laughs> and he's not he's not a skill guy. He's he needs his. He needs his joints. He needs his hands. He needs his legs to fucking, you know, he needs the athleticism and that, that really hurts some guys like him and he bounced back big time for sure. Yeah. I guess we'll get right into the playoffs. We'll get right into what uh, has transpired since we last, uh, we last met last week, me and Jordan. Uh, There's been a lot of fucking games. The whole Clippers jazz series is Inspired since, and uh, we'll get right into the 76ers Hawks. We'll start right at the top. Game two, Joel Embiid, 40 points, 13 rebounds, two, two assists. There, it was a second half domination by the 76ers. The turnovers were just absolutely insane. It was kind of the reason why the Hawks lost the game um, 17 to 7. The Hawks had 17 turnovers. When teams have under 10 turnovers, I just really find it's hard to compete, especially when your team has over 10 turnovers. You just need to keep it kind of the same and just defend the ball. Like, what the fuck's going on? The uh, 76ers had 10 steals. The Hawks had two. And that was game two. And the 76ers kind of said, yeah, we're still here. I don't think the, that was a lucky one. Well, it was – sorry – it was a lucky one that you guys got off off us, but we're fucking here and we're still the Philadelphia 76ers first seed in the East. So yeah, it's been a interesting series. Both I think both games Philly lost. Honestly, you could, you know, credit to all four games is it really has been about turnovers, you know. Uh the Philly game, I think we had the game one, we were it was like we were in double digits before they even had three turnovers. And we were just so far behind from the get-go. And, uh, you know, I think we lost that game by four. And you watch at the end of the game, and I thought we were coming back. That was one of the craziest finishes I've ever seen to a game. We dropped game one at Wells Fargo, come back one by 16, game two and three. Last night, you know, Joel Embiid probably had his, you know, worst 
offensive playoff game. Still had 17 points, 21 rebounds, 0 for 12 in the second half. And, you know, if that's what it's going to take to lose by three, I don't see that happening to Embiid very often anymore. You know, this playoff before that, he was averaging over 30 and 10 on over 70% true shooting. Absolutely ridiculous. He had a terrible game. Nobody really played well on any side of the ball. It felt like it was sloppy last night, both teams. And, you know, the Cox just grinded it out. It's even series. It's a three-game series now. We've got two games at Wells Fargo. I'm still pretty confident. I really thought we were going to close it out last night. We were up, I think, like 13, 16 at one point, and the Hawks just never went away. And, you know, here we are, tie series. I guess I'll just zoom through the fucking other two games, and then we'll just we'll talk about the whole series. Uh, game three, an explosive third quarter again by the 76ers, 34 to 19 uh, scoring. Like, that's a 16-point, no, 15-point differential. Uh, the assists were 28 to 15 by the 76ers. They were just playing overall passing, just spread offense, which was nice to see. Uh, 58% field goal percentage by the 76ers. That's very hard to beat when teams are putting it in the net that easily and that have that much efficiency. The Hawks shot 26% from three, six for 23. That's not going to cut it in the NBA, especially at this time. And then game four, you can blame – Joel missing the clutch layup, but it was a fucking, like, it was a close game the whole time, and really, the Hawks had no business winning this game. They were shooting 37% from the floor and 30% from three. It was mainly the turnovers that cost them 12-4 uh, to four in the favor of the Hawks. The 76ers had 12 turnovers, and uh, Trey Young had fucking 18 assists, so pretty, it was a pretty uh, stat Juice stat line for Joel Embiid and Trey Young. Just I don't yeah. I don't know. It's one of those of games stats, that could but... yeah, it's one of those games that could have won either way. The 76ers could have buckled down at the end, but yeah. they didn't. And it, it I was just the, kind of a lucky one. I think the Sixers lost more than the, the Hawks won last night. Yeah. If that makes yeah. any sense. I think we shot ourselves in the foot and you know, bit us in the ass and you know. We got to figure it out here going back to Wells Fargo tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. What do you guys have to say about the series? Uh, I think the best thing that honestly happened was Danny Green not playing because uh said from the start that guy's a bum, man, and he needs to get less minutes because he can't hit a three. I seen it when he was playing for the Raptors, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, I think you guys are going to take the series either way. Hope so. Um, Joel Embiid not playing well the last game, but I mean, hey, like you said, he doesn't have many of those. I think he's going to come out banging next game. Trey Young's been playing good, but he put up 25, not really playing good. So I think we got Seth Curry playing really nice for you too lately, like 21 here, 17 there, you know, that's going to help you guys out a lot. And Tobias Harris just always doing his thing. <clears throat> yeah, I think you guys are going to take it. Clint Cabela, fucking 16 rebounds. Fucking, that's all the guy's good for. Fuck. <laughs> the rebounds, man. <laughs> Better Drummond. Oh, and what do you think about the uh, 76 ers Hawks series, bro? Um, I think the Sixers are definitely the better team. Uh, good teams always uh, slip up. I think that's all that happened uh, last game. The series is tied 2-2. Uh, MB gets a little other day to rest up. Uh, I don't know, the, six, the Sixers are beating them in a lot of the stats per game, uh, maybe rebounds and offensive rebounds they could get more tighter on. Uh, the Hawks are beating them in that right now. But, um, no, I think yeah, I think the Sixers take it here. on I don't see them losing again after Trey Young shooting eight for 26. Uh, I think they're going to figure it out. He's going to start missing shots. You, you can't just keep throwing the ball up like that and having it go in. Maybe you can. But I, I see the Sixers taking us. All right. And the Nets Bucks series, probably the most, ex- no offense, but probably the most exciting series in the Eastern Conference, just because the Hawks and 76ers is so lopsided talent wise. Um, <clears throat> James Harden has been out. Kyrie Irving just recently went out with a foot injury after landing on uh, Giannis's foot. 
don't really think it was a dirty play. Some people are questioning it just to, you know, get some content, get a fucking video out of it or make a debate, but I don't really see it being a dirty play. Um, yeah, Giannis kind of got his foot underneath uh, Kyrie. If that was on the perimeter, it'd be a different story. Maybe it was, maybe it was a, uh, maybe it was a dirtier play on the perimeter, but Giannis is going for the rebound and I don't really see much. It wasn't really dirty of a play. It's just kind of a fluke. Um, yeah, the Bucs are crawling back in this series. Um, the third game was basically a fucking superstar shootout. Uh, Middleton, 35-15-1. and one. Giannis, 33-14-2. and two. Durant had 30 points. Kyrie had 22. And Bruce Brown had 16. Everybody else on the uh, Brooklyn Nets had single-digit points, which is fucking terrible. The Nets <laughs> were also terrible from the three-pointer, shooting 25%. That's not going to fucking cut it. And uh, both teams were absolutely dreadful from the field, uh, 36% and 38% respectfully. I mean, the Nets had a lower field goal percentage in that game. Uh, game four, Kyrie goes down with his foot injury. I believe he played 11 or 17 minutes, something like that. Uh, not a really good sign for the Nets. They don't really have the depth to lose these superstars and – we have really yet to see them all together doing their fucking thing in the playoffs. Uh, losing Kyrie, they're questioning whether he's even going to play in the rest of the playoffs. So that's a bit of a loss. And I don't really think Kevin and – well, I can see Kevin and James having what it takes to beat the Milwaukee Bucks. But after that, it's just – there's uh, not going to be a lot of tread left on the tires and they need somebody to pull the fucking weight on that team. But yeah, I, uh, Kyrie's injury mm-hmm. was disgusting. Mm-hmm. Uh, James Harden's questionable to come back though for Game Five. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. James Harden is yeah. back for Game Five. I okay, he's, so he's, he's coming back. Bit, he's supposed to do shoot around, see how it feels, and yeah, go from, go from there. Yeah, I can't see him playing even if he's a little sore. He'll just say he's good. Um, I think he knew. Okay. Why he came I don't know if he has that mentality. Hopefully, he does. Fuck. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very true. Yeah. I mean, I could see him holding out one more game if he's not confident in it just to, you know, make sure he doesn't re-injure it. But, but if you do and you go down 3-2 to the Bucs, man, fuck. And yeah. Giannis, Giannis playing like the MVP he is right now, like guys going off. Yeah. Kevin Durant's going to really need to fucking step it up. Yeah. Blake Griffin too, man. Like, I know you're getting up there or whatever, but you used to be a fucking all-star. You need to fucking step it up. Yeah, I don't know what happened last game. He was playing really well in the he first half. He was playing half. good. Yeah, he, and they he just had that barely played him in the second game half. There, yeah. yeah. Then he had like no. eight and six or something like that in the first half, and you know he was playing well defensively, and they just took him out. He barely played in the second half, and I'm watching him like, what is this? Like, what that was like a lot of games during the regular season. At the end, he was I had him in fantasy, and he would start off the game with like eight to ten points or whatever, and then he'd only get, like, six more minutes after the second half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, they know what they're doing. There's His knees are fucked more than Todd Gurley's, so. (laughs) Yeah. I think he threw threw down a nice post around Giannis there, though, a couple games ago. (laughs) I think um, if they they do end up losing Kyrie for the rest of the season, or not season, but series, maybe even season, um, I think – KD's definitely going to have to turn it up. Uh, we've all seen what he can do in the playoffs before, so hopefully him and Harden click well together. But if Harden comes back and he actually is healthy, then uh, it's going to be tough. Like <clears throat> The Bucks do have good defenders, so they're really going to have to get their bench going. The rest of the starters, they're going to have to try and out, out-muscle the Bucks because they uh, – seems like when the Bucks get going, they don't stop for a while, but – I think that's going to be a, a seven-game series. I honestly don't know who, who takes it. Uh, this is what I think. I think the Brooklyn Nets are rushing back James Harden off, off injury because Kyrie got down. Kevin Durant really can't do much more. Like, fuck, he's putting up, like, 30 a game. You need other role players to step it up, which they're not going to do because the Bucs are so good defensively. They have P.J. Tucker suffocating Kevin Durant. I know Kevin Durant's still putting up 30 a game, but the efficiency's not there. But they still have to force Kevin Durant to get the ball because he's the only one that's fucking scoring. So 
<laughs> the Bucs can just sit back on defense, play spread defense, and I see the Bucs taking this in six. This is pretty much fucking done. Same. You can't you can't put the you can't put all the burden on uh, Kevin Durant's shoulders. They <clears throat> they just they picked their poison when they went and picked up James Harden, and they said fuck the bench, we don't need him. We're just gonna yeah. roll our three superstars and hope for the best. And when we're playing, we're living in the prima donna stage of sports where. If you get a bug bite, you're out your day to day and you get fucking three games off. I don't really agree with it, especially with the money they spend on the players. But um, yeah, they, these players literally sit down off a sore ankle, which anybody in youth sports would have been told to get the fuck back out there. <laughs> so, um, especially yeah. playoffs, man. Like, yeah, they literally, just, yeah, you just got the series tied on you. You're, I, I also understand the other hand as well. Like Kevin Durant has rings. Why the fuck does he care? He's getting his check. And they're just yeah. they're playing basketball for millions of dollars. Like, why the fuck do you really care? We're, like the league is just blown up so much, like financially. But yeah, I see the Bucks taking the shit in six. It's it's a fucking wrap. I'm not sure how much of a difference this guy would have made, but having when they acquired Aldrich and then having him retire, um, I think he. But at the same time, though, they just they, – it's like they got – they're like, fuck, let's stock our starting five and yeah. fuck, fuck everything else kind of thing. So, it's yeah. – that just that's not going to work out, man, especially when you got all your superstars going down in your fucking starting five. And then LeVert, was, LeVert was a good bench guy. I liked when he was on the Nets. He played well, but I think losing a guy like that off your bench to come in and play against the other team's bench, like, they don't have that guy anymore. Yeah, Losing, losing Dinwiddie is huge. Yeah, uh, losing Dan Woody is back next Spence year. Went off, Especially man. when your two star guards are out. <laughs> so. Spence, Spence I mean, was good. Levert was good. Yeah. Like, Jerry Allen was good. Really, the box can. Yeah, was good too. <laughs> the box can literally fuck the Nets defensively now. Like, yeah. if they really want to, they can put PJ Tucker and Giannis double team Kevin every yeah. the whole fucking time. And they're done. They, had, they don't have. The supporting cast to support Kevin Durant. No. So, well, not only only unless Harden comes back and he isn't healthy and he's out there just kind of being a decoy, try try and draw maybe Tucker over to him. They played to get they played on the same team together. Bet you Tucker knows how he plays quite well. But if I'm the box head coach, I say, okay, this guy's coming off injury. He's not a very I'm not going to say he's not a good shooter, but he's not an efficient shooter from three. Uh, he gets all of his points at the free throw line from driving and literally just sit back on him. If you give up three or four threes or five threes a game from James Harden, so be it. But we're just going to sit back and we're not going to play into his game, especially on injury. So, yeah. it all, honestly, though, he, he, he's not an efficient shooter, but he has those games where he has the eight threes and like he, he can pop off but not coming off this bad of an injury i don't think he's been dealing with it for a while all of his 40 50 point games are because he goes to the free throw line yeah oh 100 100 percent. i shoot like fucking 16 18 fucking free throws a game <laughs> Fuck. yeah and he doesn't miss, he doesn't really miss the line but no uh mac do you have anything to say about the bucks yeah. i mean they a couple of their bench pieces haven't been that bad claxton's been pretty decent at the rim for what he's tasked with you know Guarding Giannis, fucking on Tentacumpo, <laughs> and uh, Mike James, he's really stepped up for them. He's been huge. Uh, you know, he's he's filled the role that you know they don't have with Dinwiddie being out, with Kyrie being out now, and Harden being out. He's stepped up, but uh, I don't know. Like you guys said, I just think they don't have enough. Mm-hmm. They just, they're just, yeah. they they've just, yeah, they're just <laughs> not enough there. Bruce Brown could pop off sometimes too, and like he needs to get going a little bit. He's he's popping off as much as he can, really. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, they need to utilize DeAndre Jordan more. And is he Jordan. hurt still? I know he's, I, I, he's just been coach decision. Like he's just um, been minimized minutes for that. But you have the roster. You have Jordan on center. You put Blake on power forward, and you put Kevin on. Uh, small forward or shooting, you, you can even bring him back to the shooting guard and just you beef up the paint because yeah. the box aren't a very good shooting team anyway. So just let them, let them fucking go to town on the three point line, but beef it up in the paint so that 
You can send them to the line too. They're not a very good fucking free throw shooting line either, but I don't know. I'm not Steve Nash and I don't get paid to coach teams yet. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. But uh, yeah, no, uh, jazz Clippers. will bring it over to the West. Uh, four games have gone down since our last video on Wednesday. Donovan fucking Mitchell. Jesus Christ. That, that guy can fucking pop off. Game one, 45, three and five. The Jazz came out hot in the third quarter. Uh, game two, Donovan Mitchell strikes again, 37 points, three uh, rebounds, four assists. They were terrible from the free throw line, 62% as a team, and uh, they were lights out from the three point. Uh, 20 for 39, 51%. Again, Gobert had 20, uh, 20 rebounds. Game three, the Clippers had 24 points off turnovers. Kawhi had 34, 12, and five. Uh, Paul George, I think he's getting tired of uh, pandemic P or playoff. He's showing that he's playoff P again, 31, three, and five. Uh, Clippers brought the heat in the most important quarters, the second quarter and the fourth. And game four, uh, strong first quarter for the Clippers. They were up 30 to 13 after the first. It was kind of the deciding factor. Donovan Mitchell, 37, five, and five. Paul George, 31, 9, and 4, and Kawhi Leonard, 31, 7, and 3. Uh, the Jazz need to try and minimize production from Kawhi and Paul George. I know that the Clippers do a good job. Ty Lube does a good job rotating. Uh, like in the playoffs, you're going to see at most 8 to 10 people playing a game on each team, but like Ty Lube just takes it even a bit further. He'll play like 13 players and just keep everyone fresh. And it's kind of turning the fucking series around. And the Clippers, on the other hand, just need to suff suffocate Donovan Mitchell defensively. I know it's hard because he's one of those dual threats that can shoot and drive whenever he wants and get to the free throw line, get a lot of hand ones. But close fucking series, man. I knew it was going to be very close, especially like these two Two teams are very good teams. Uh, what does everyone think about the Jazz Clippers series? I mean, I thought uh, – I think they're – you know, it doesn't look like it, but I think they are doing a good job with Donovan Mitchell. He's he's putting up 30-plus points a game, but he's also shooting over 25 times a game, and I think he's only had one game where he shot over 50%. You mm -hmm. know, so he's – efficiency-wise, he's about average, but he's just – you know, he's – his usage rate is so high. He always has the ball. He is a hell of a scorer, but I think, you know, he's trying to do a little bit too much at times. It almost seems like, but I mean, he is so good. It's, you know, I don't blame them if, you know, that's how they run their offense, but I think they're doing a good job in containing them. They're not letting them go, you know, 14 for, for 20 for 35 points. You know, he's going, 14 for 29 he's going 12 for 25 he's going 15 for 29 and putting up these numbers so it you know they could be definitely doing a worse job and it's it's nice to see paul george absolutely fucking shit pumping again yeah yeah that was nice. that was that's a big thing and it's very crucial in the series and the success of the clippers clippers have what it takes it's just a matter of execution and they need they, like, Kawhi is without question. He's going to go ahead and do his fucking thing. It's just the question is Paul George being that, that number two, the, the Robin, and he's being Robin right now. That's for fucking sure. Uh, George, what do you think about the Jazz Clippers series, bud? Uh, I think it's a good series so far. I'm pretty sure that's the one me and you predicted to go seven or whatever, too. Mm -hmm. So it's looking like it's going to go that way so far. I mean, both teams are playing – just back and forth, man, back and forth. Fucking Kawhi's doing his thing. Yeah, like you said, PG's coming out too. Um, I think uh, if you're Utah, I mean, Jordan Clarkson, he needs to pop off for a game here, act like the sixth man of the year he is. Ingles is kind of doing his thing. Um, Bogdanovich, though, that's a guy that needs to pop off for a game too. I mean, I had him in fantasy and he can pop off for over – 30 a game at any random time too, man. When Bowen gets hot, he can fucking go. So they're going to need a game from him. Rudy Gobert, fucking last game they played, he was fucking 8 and 11. So he needs to step it up too. Rebound freak, fucking eight. Re he needs more than eight rebounds. That's for sure. And he needs more than 11 points, even though I know he's not really big for the points, but. 
I think it's still going to go seven. Yeah, uh, the Jazz, when they won, they won nail better games. Like uh, game one, 112 to 109. Game two, 117 to 111. Like those are fucking close games. And then when the Clippers win, game three, yeah. 132 to 106. Like it's not even fucking close. And then 118 no. to 104. It's like okay, but it's still like not a close game. It may have been close, fucking seven or eight minutes left in the fourth, but just a takeover. Uh, yeah. Oh, and what do you think about the Jazz Clippers, bud? Who's uh, who's gonna come out and see your sons at the uh, <laughs> the Western Conference Finals? Um, I hope it's Utah. Um, I don't think like I I, I don't think that Utah though is gonna beat the Clippers. I think the Clippers take it. Um, Leonard, George. Even Morris, Morris is playing well. Um, I, I, the Jazz are <clears throat> like you can't. I don't think you can run Dave there. Um, uh, Mitchell and Bogdanovich, like as like as hard as they are, like that they're relying on those three guys to get their points. Uh, it's also because of the Conley injury as well. Yeah, not not, not having Conley um, is is big for the Clippers to step up and take advantage because. Like Jordan Clarkson can't be playing 30 minutes having eight points. Uh, regular season, he was a way better player. All of a sudden, I don't know if it's the nerves. Maybe uh, if you're going to stick his pregame shit, I don't know. But uh, he he's not doing Wait, The award's going to his head. Yeah. Also, the Clippers defense. I'm not just going to put it all on Clarkson. Like, the Clippers defense. Is, yeah. Like, their team is <laughs> fucking very strong defensively. Rondo's Rondo's a good perimeter def- uh, defender. Kawhi and Paul George, like, yeah, they speak for themselves. Defensively. Exactly. I think the Clippers take it. Um, I don't even know. I think I see it going six. I see it going four two. Clippers take the next two, and uh, yeah, those George is back. Uh, Leonard, we've seen what Leonard does in the playoffs. He does what he wants, and he produces a. The Rondo's been out the last couple of games, hasn't he? He played like uh, in two or three. He played like five or six minutes. Okay, yeah, he wasn't in game four. Yeah, Reggie yeah. Jackson's been playing so well. I think, uh, yeah. aside from last game, but he's been playing so well too. It's hard to keep him out of the lineup. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just kind of on the stat sheet for game four. You just kind of uh, sub him in, sub Rondo in to just give Reggie a lot of work. Like they know who their number one point guard is now. Yeah. Like Patrick Beverly is just not a necessity in the playoffs. Like uh, bad trick. Yeah, you don't really need that guy just running around like a chicken with his head cut off, just getting stupid fucking fouls and just <laughs> agi- agi- agitating the other team. That's all he's there for. It's just to agitate the other team. Yeah, so he's good at it though. Flail, flails his fucking arms around like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Dive, <laughs> just dives at the stupidest balls. They're not even crucial balls to dive at. Just, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, and that brings us to the Phoenix Suns Denver Nuggets. Thought this uh series was gonna be a little more intense, but holy fuck, man, where did these Phoenix Suns come from? This is uh it's very interesting to watch. Fucking Chris Paul is here and ready to fucking go. He's had enough of the talk of the past. He's here. Devin Booker's just shooting the fucking lights out. Uh game two. Game wasn't even fucking close. Chris Paul needs to sign up for the U.S. Army because he's an absolute field fucking general out there. 17, <laughs> 17 points, five rebounds, 15 assists. Uh, the Suns. Zero turnovers. I mean, I'll just <clears throat> I'll just wrap up the whole series. Jokic was ejected in game four. It was a very questionable call, uh, but like that shouldn't be the deciding factor to a series. You guys, sh- the Nuggets should have had at least one game in the belt so that that wasn't the case. But they didn't. And uh, after the ejection, they kind of just, I think the spirit of the team just died. They knew it was their, uh, their last breath. The pace of play that the Phoenix Suns play at and just the shooting efficiency on all spots of the floor is just a completely different story. It just kind of came, it, to me, it just came out of fucking nowhere, especially during, with the Lakers too. Like these older teams, they just are bit not even older, just bigger teams. They just can't keep up to the speed. They play a smaller ball. They, you would think that they would play eight and more that 
more than they do because they're a smaller unit team, but they don't, they don't force Aiden to play at all. They just play, they stick to their guns. They play very efficiently and they just kind of play in the hands of the ref as well. They get good foul calls. They go to the line a lot. They're very efficient from free throw and they, they just make good shots and they just play very fast. And that's just basically what I've got to say. The Phoenix Suns have kind of taken me by surprise. And against the Clippers or the Jazz, they have their fucking – the Jazz or the Clippers have their hands full against this team. Like, this team is not to be fucked with now. They've kind of made their statement and their presence known. I am just waiting to see who's going to actually compete against the Phoenix Suns. Yep. I mean, they beat LeBron, and, you know, that's a fucking task, right? I think you win a series against LeBron James and you probably don't feel like there's anybody in the world that can beat you. And with the perimeter defense they have there with Chris Paul and Bridges, you know, obviously Booker is a fucking white paper bag on defense, but those two are just <laughs> so elite on the perimeter at defending. Aiton's a pretty good rim protector. Crowd is a good defender. Like you said, they're shooting lights out. Payne comes off the bench. and He's just a fucking spark plug. He's doing what Jordan Clarkson should be doing. Mm. He comes in, he gets some buckets, he gets the boys buzzing. He's ugly as fuck. <laughs> he, is, yeah. he is hideous. He fuck yeah. me, but they are just firing in all cylinders, man. They're a well oiled machine. <laughs> Chris I'm, wait, I'm waiting for somebody to just say to him straight up, like after a big three, just get right in his face, like rush rush the back court or rush the fucking front court and be like. Why are you celebrating when you're that fucking ugly? If I were you, I would just stay quiet so the cameras don't stay on you. He is. Uh, yeah, he is ugly I mean, as fuck. I'm not. I don't pride myself on my taste of men, but fuck, <laughs> <laughs> he's. Uh, it's not a pretty fucking sight. I'll be with you on that one, man. No, but they're. Uh, they're just. Yeah, I think you know they're. Everyone's playing well. They just. They took out the Lakers, who were supposed to be the favorites to win the chip. Took out the MVP. They're rolling. Let's see if this long break is good for them or bad for them. You know, because yeah, that yeah. can be, you know, sometimes it can get a little rusty there having a week or an extra 10 days off, but they look pretty unstoppable. Yeah, I know. I totally agree, Mac. Fucking them taking out fucking the Lakers. I think it just took a huge pressure off their shoulders. And then after that, taking out the MVP four straight. I don't like you said. I don't think there's anything that can really stop them, or at least that's what they're. That, yeah. That's what's going through their head, kind of thing, right now. Devin Bucker just shooting the lights out. Like I said, the kid has the killer mentality. He wants it. Chris Paul, they call him the point god for no reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's just fucking popping off. He's sick of all the fucking talk, like Brando says. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nuggets, man. <laughs> what the fuck happened to Aaron Gordon, though? Like that guy used to be a fucking all star, and he's a fucking bum now. Like, <laughs> just sorry, but where is he? Thirty fucking, thirty fucking minutes a game, and he fucking gets like eight to fucking six points. It's just fucking sickening, honestly. Uh, but you got your fucking uh, Nikola Jokic MVP, who didn't really play like the MVP he was either, except for maybe one game. And then the ejection at the very end in the fourth game, like Brandon said, it didn't affect the series whatsoever. That team was getting fucking stomped out either way. So, yeah, Suns are on a fucking rampage, and they're they're hungry. So, fuck the fuck out. Yep. I guess we'll go to our Phoenix Suns insider, <laughs> Owen John Maya Webster. <laughs> Not uh, sure who John Maya is, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... I mean, I, I did start cheering for them when uh, ever I noticed Devin Booker a few years ago. So uh, thanks to him going there. But uh, you got to start somewhere. Um, no, Devin Booker's all of his averages right now in the few games they've played in the playoffs, they're all up from what he was doing in the season. I thought uh, he being the kind of guy he is fucking dating a Jenner. Like, you think on the playoffs, he's just going to shut down, get fucking nervous. He's completely done the opposite. Um, Chris Paul, what he did against the Lakers, like multiple games having under 10 points. Now, uh, like as Brandon just said, uh, 37 points game before he had 27, 17 and 21. Um, he's, he's playing lights out right now. 
Uh, I think all they like they need to keep it simple. Um, moving the ball through Booker and Paul, like they're they're not me- they're not messing up right now. But then if the, the Clippers come, you got Paul George, you got Rondo, you got uh, Leonard, you got to deal with guys like that that the Jazz just don't have necessarily. Um, the Lakers series, yeah, they did beat them, but I mean. It, AD was not healthy, I don't think, at all. Like, not one game was he 100%. So, it's kind of hard for LeBron to try and carry. I mean, he's done it before. He's good at it. He's the GOAT. Well, LeBron – or Michael Jordan's the GOAT, but um, – <laughs> um, uh, I don't think – he just didn't have what it took to <laughs> beat a young boys team like uh, the Sun. So, I'm hoping for the Jazz. Uh Jordan Clarkson's going to be playing against uh, Booker, and now Booker's banging his ex. So I think Clark's going to keep Clarkson off the score sheet more. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully it's Jazz. Clippers, that, that'll be a good series for them to be in that. But. Maybe Booker's feeling so good because he's actually stabilized his relationship with Kendall down here. I mean, she's, yeah. been, she's been around the fucking town, let me tell you that, and their yeah. friends in the family. All right, so uh, Tuesday's <laughs> games, a.k.a. tonight, a.k.a. yesterday. <sighs> we got the Bucs and the Nets playing game five. Who does everyone have winning that? I have the Bucs taking them. I have the Bucs tonight. Yeah. Bucs by probably fucking 10 or more even, honestly. Yeah. Fuck, we're going to do a point spread, too. I'll be that guy, and uh, I'll take the Nets if James Harden's playing. Our, our I mean, scoring. it's in Brooklyn. It is in Brooklyn, so... I'll take the Nets. <sighs> and uh, today's games, a.k.a. tomorrow's games, Wednesday's games, uh, we got the Hawks at 76ers game five and the Clippers at Jazz game five. I have the 76ers taking game five and the Clippers taking it off the Jazz. I'll take the Sixers there too. And I don't... Uh, I haven't heard anything on Conley, but uh, I think the Clippers got a lot of momentum right now and... If they steal this game in Utah, it's over. So, but I think they, I think they can do it. I'm taking, yeah, 76ers as well. And back at home, I'm going to, I'm going to go jazz for this one. Jeez. I'm going to be that guy. Oh, I'm sorry, boys. Uh, I'm going Sixers. Uh, I, as I said, I don't think they're going to lose another game, but, uh, uh, I'm going to go with the Jazz as well because I do want them to. I want them to win. Guts telling me Clippers are going to win that series, but let's go Jazz. Why? Just because they're the shittier team defensively? Yeah. Yeah. Suns. Well, mm-hmm. Did you guys see all those uh, fucking memes about the uh, the Jazz game there when they were giving out the free kids meals with, and Carl Malone was fucking watching? No, <laughs> I saw so many of the man saying it was his idea to fucking get out the kids. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> Why? Because he used to fuck like sixteen and fifteen year olds back when he was in the league, and fuck that asked, many like, of them. That there was a fuck ton of them too. Yeah, and like he has like nine fucking kids. Yeah, and that's that's only when he wasn't shooting blanks. <laughs> <laughs> fuck man. Yeah. Fuck. That's what he, and that's not from that. That wasn't when he was fucking the kids. Those are his kids, right? Yeah, you know those saying? are his kids. Uh, I don't know if his baby mamas were of age or not. I didn't really do too much research on Carl Malone. But... It's kind of weird how that's just like, you know, like it's known about, but it's not like she's not like shunned for it. Nowadays, he'd be fucking crucified. I don't think anybody gives a fuck about Carl Malone now. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, personally, yeah. He's number two in all-time scoring, which is he's going to be number three here in the yeah. season. And half Back when he played stuff. against fucking plumbers, electricians, and milkmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all those guys fucking <laughs> taking it to John's mom though after the games. Stop his <laughs> mom, John Mai. No, John Mai. <laughs> Christ. Well, yeah. at least uh, the goat played back then. That was the worst fucking comeback I'm, I'm I've glad. ever heard. You said well, and then you gave about three seconds. I'm really glad we all waited in anticipation. Yeah, <laughs> that was. Nope. Uh, Brandon hates to hear it, but 
He is the goat. It's up to interpretation, and uh, he's just not an overall better basketball player. First son's insider, John Mai, by the way. <laughs> I've seen your shoulder moving up there the whole video, Mac. Are you, uh, are you scratching your sack when you're laying down like that? My ass. <laughs> All I actually right. have an ingrown hair on my ass I've been trying to pick, to be honest. That's fucking ridiculous. We're going to wrap this up. This has been episode eight of, Potty Mo- of Zooming with the Boys from Potty Mouse Sports. Thank sponsored you for by t- Nesquik. We are not sponsored <laughs> by Nesquik. They have not got the check yet. But uh, reach out to uh, Potty Mouse Sports at gmail.com if you're interested in, you know, saucing the boys a few dollars for a quick little ad at the beginning. But other than that, uh, no cap recap will be on Friday and then Monday we're going to be coming with an episode about the foreign substances in the MLB and the whole charade that has gone on in the last couple of weeks uh, a lot of content to cover there so we're going to take all zoom with the boys episode on Monday to cover that and just give our opinion on spider tack uh, other than that stay tuned follow me on Instagram Twitter the Stay in touch with everything that's going on with Potty Mouse Sports. And until next time, everybody, please have a good night and go fuck yourself.